So we're just going to finish up the notes here, starting with example five um, from the eight four notes. It says when asked to solve a right triangle, it means to find the links are the measures of all the angles and the measures of all three sides. So that's what it means when it says solve a right triangle. Example five says solve the right triangle, round side measures to the nearest tenth and angle measures to the nearest degree. They actually give us two side lengths and they give us an angle measure. So what I like to do to begin with is to list the things that I want to find. I want to find the measure of angle X. I want to find the measure of angle Y, the measure of angle Z, and then the side lengths, which would be XZ, ZY, and XY. Any measurements that I'm already given, I'm going to go ahead and fill those in. Typically, they give you three to begin with. So I know, I don't know X, ang, the measure of angle X, I don't know the measure of angle Y, but I do know the measure of angle Z is 90 degrees. The length of XZ is 5, and the length of ZY is 9. And that leaves me with the measure of angle X, the measure of angle Y, and the length of XY. To find XY, that should be pretty easy because I have a right triangle and I already have the lengths of two sides. So I can just use Pythagorean theorem to find the length of XY. Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a and b always come, measures come from the legs of the right triangle and c is always the hypotenuse. So in this case the legs are 5 and 9. So I would use 5 squared plus 9 squared is equal to c squared. That's 45 plus 8, not 45, sorry, 25 plus 81. Is equal to c squared. That's 106 is equal to c squared. And then you want to take the square root of both sides. It said to give the measures of the sides to the nearest tenth. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my calculator and find the square root of 106. And I get that c which is my hypotenuse, is approximately 10.3. I can fill that in on my list then for xy is 10.3. And I'm going to also put that up here in my picture. Now I'm going to focus on my angles. My angles are going to take um, some trig to find that. So I'm going to start with angle x. And I'm going to use a trig function for that. I know that I'm given, I want to use my given values, 5 and 9 already, and not the one that I approximated. Um, angle or side 5 is the adjacent side to angle X, and side 9 there is the opposite side. So I have to think about, well, what trig functions use the adjacent and the opposite? And that would be tangent. So tangent is the opposite over adjacent. So I'll go down here and to find the measure of angle X, we're going to use tangent. The tangent of an angle is opposite over adjacent. I don't know what my angle is. That's what I want to find. That's angle X. The opposite side in the picture is 9 and the adjacent side was 5. So this is like the example that we did, the, the previous example that we did where we had to find um, a missing angle and we used the inverse for that. So I'm going to get rid of tangent. I'm going to do the inverse tangent of my function. 
which gives me that x is equal to the inverse tangent of 9 fifths. Now it says for the angles to round to the nearest whole number. So in my calculator, I'm going to take the inverse tangent of 9 divided by 5, so 9 over 5, and I'm going to get, that's approximately 61 degrees. So now you can go put that up in your list. And you could also, if you wanted to, you could fill that out on your triangle, that that was 61 degrees. Now finding the third angle should be pretty easy because you already know two of those angles. You've got a 61 degree angle and you've got a 91 degree angle. So to find the measure of angle Y, I'm going to just subtract from 180. So the measure of angle Y is going to be equal to 180 minus the sum of the other two. So we had a 90 degree angle, we had a 61 degree angle. That's 180 minus 151 degrees. And that would give me the measure of angle Y then would be 29 degrees. And so I can fill that out the top. And now I've solved my, my triangle. I know all three angles and all three sides. I have one final example here. It's the same kind of problem. And I want to um, solve that triangle. So I want to find all the angles and all the sides. I'm going to start by doing the same thing I did on the last problem and list the things I want to find. I have got measure of angle A, measure of angle B, measure of angle C, and then my sides. I've got side AB, I've got side BC, and side AC that I need to find. And I'm going to fill that in. So I already know angle B, angle A, that's 62 degrees. I know angle B is 90 degrees. I don't know angle C. For the sides, I don't know AB. I don't know BC, but I do know AC is 10. This one, this time I'm going to start with the angles because I know two of those and that allows me to find my third angle pretty easily. So to find the measure of angle C, we're going to subtract from 180 for that one again. So the measure of angle C is equal to 180 minus the other two. Well, I had a 90 degree angle and I have a 62 degree angle. That's going to be 180 minus 152 degrees, which gives me a measure of angle C is 28 degrees. And we can put that in our, our list. And you can put it in your triangle if you want. Now I'm going to try to work on my sides. I can't use Pythagorean theorem to find my sides, at least not right now, because I only have one side, so I'm going to have to use some trigonometry. Let's use the angle that they gave us instead of the one that we found, just in case we made an error. So I'm going to use this um, 62 degree, and then I know that 10 is the hypotenuse, and I'm just going to pick a side to find. Let's say I want to pick um, find side AB, I'll put a little X there, and AB is my adjacent side. And then I have to think, well, okay, what um, trig function uses adjacent and hypotenuse? And that's cosine. To find side AB, use cosine. So cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, the angle we have is 62, so I'm going to put that in there. 
cosine of 62 degrees is equal to the adjacent side. That's going to be my x, and the hypotenuse is 10. And then I want to solve for x, so I'm going to have to do a little algebra. Multiply both sides by 10. That gives me that x is equal to 10 times the cosine of 62. And now I can put it in my calculator just as is. So as is, I want to put 10 times the cosine of 62. And round to the nearest tenths for the lengths of the sides, which is approximately 4.7. So side AB would be 4.7. I can put that in there. And I can write it on my triangle if I want. Now I have two sides, and any time I, time I have two sides in a right triangle, I can use Pythagorean theorem. So to find BC, I'm going to use Pythagorean th theorem. which is, of course, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In the triangle, I have the hypotenuse and I have one of the legs, which is now 4.7. So I'm going to say a is going to be my 4.7. I need my other leg which is B, and then the hypotenuse was 10. Just going to double check my units there. Okay. And I can start to solve. I'm going to mark out the assignment here because we changed that guy. So it'll be 4.7 squared. That is 22.09. And 10 squared is 100. And so I'm going to subtract 22.09 from 100. That's 77.91. And now we can take the square root. Remember that we want to round to the nearest tenth because it's a side. And that is approximately 8.8. So I'm going to go up. I'm going to finish my little list. That side BC is 8.8. .8. And now I've solved my triangle. I've got the whole thing. All right, that's it. Um, for our assignment, you should do page 573, numbers 8 through 15 all. And numbers 28 through 40, the evens. I'll write that down real quick. All right, have a nice evening, and I will see you tomorrow.